guys, today we're going to learn about complementary and supplementary angles. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to write and solve simple equations for an unknown angle using complementary and supplementary angles. Go ahead and get out your notes and be ready to learn. Before we get started with figuring out unknown angles, let's talk about what complementary and supplementary angles are. Complementary angles are angles that add up to 90 degrees. In this example, we have a 52 degree angle and a 38 degree angle. If I were to add the 52 and the 38, those add up to 90 degrees. Next, we have supplementary angles. These are angles that add up to 180 degrees. So in this example, we've got a 128 degree angle and a 52 degree angle. These add up to 180. In these two examples, we have what are called adjacent angles or angles that are next to each other. Down here, we have some pictures of angles that are non-adjacent or not right next to each other. In this first picture, if I were to find the sum of 27 and 63, that would add up to be 90 degrees. So even though these angles aren't next to each other, these are complementary angles. In this example over here, we have a 60 degree angle and a 120 degree angle. Again, if I were to find the sum of 60 and 120, I would get a sum of 180. So I know that these are supplementary angles. Now we need to remember which is which. How do I know that complementary is 90 and how do I know that supplementary is 180? Well, there are several ways that you can try to remember this by and I'll give you those and you can find the one that sticks with you the best. So the first way is the way that I use. So the way that I remember is that in the alphabet C comes before S and then on a number line 90 comes before 180. So I remember that the one that comes first goes together. Since C comes first, it goes with 90. Since S comes next, it goes with 180. Another way that you can remember these. So if you think about a corner in your house or a corner in the classroom, that corner makes 90 degrees. So you can think about C starting with a corner and that goes with complementary. Or if you think about a straight line, a straight line makes 180 degrees. So you can think about that S with the straight line going with supplementary. A final way that I have to remember this is that if you take an S and you look at the two parts of the S. So if we look at the top portion of the S and then the bottom portion of the S, it kind of makes two C's, a regular C and an upside down C. So if you think about two complementary angles making a supplementary angle because 90 plus 90 is 180, that's the final way that you can remember that complementary is 90, supplementary is 180. So take one of those strategies to remember which is complementary and which is supplementary and try to get those memorized. Now that we've reviewed the difference between complementary and supplementary angles, we are going to get into figuring out the degrees of different angles. So first, angles can be named many ways based on their characteristics. Below we have a tool that is called a protractor and here the pro protractor shows the measure of many different angles. So we're going to use that diagram to answer the questions below. Our first question is asking what is the measure of angle CFE? That's what that little symbol next to those letters means right there. That's the angle symbol. So I'm going to look on this protractor for the three letters C, F, E. And that number, that letter in the middle signifies the vertex of the angle. The vertex of the angle being the corner. So if I look in this diagram, here is C, there's F, and there's E. So we're talking about this angle right here. So when looking at a protractor, there are numbers that are on the top of this line right here and numbers that are on the bottom of the line. You're going to need to know which side you're starting from. So over here is the left side of the protractor and this is the right side of the protractor. So if you're looking from the left over, then you're going to use the numbers that are on the top of the line. But if you're looking from the left over, you're going to use the numbers on the bottom of the line. 
So for this angle, we have it lined up over here on the left, on the right. So since it's on the right, we are going to use the numbers on the bottom of the line. And I'm going to look where this top ray crosses. And it crosses right here at 80. So angle CFE is 80 degrees. One way that you can kind of double check to make sure you're using the top or the bottom number is if I look at this angle CFE, I see that it is just a little bit narrower, a little more acute than a 90 degree angle. And since 90 degrees is right here, I can see that that angle is less than 90. So I would want the number that is less than 90, which in this case would be 80. However, if I was looking at it from this direction, I would see that it's a little bit more obtuse or a little bigger than 90. So I would go with that 100 degree angle. Next, we'll look at our next angle measure that we're looking for, and it says, what is the measure of angle AFC? So angle AFC, we look at angle A to F to C, and I have it outlined here in yellow. So now, since this angle is starting on the left, I'm going to use the numbers on the top of my protractor. So this angle lines up with the same uh, ray here. And I see that it does end up at that 100 degree angle. Again, like I was just saying, it's a little more obtuse, so I know it's a little bit bigger than 90. So this angle, angle AFC, is 110 degrees. So I may have already been using some vocabulary words that you're not completely sure of or don't exactly remember. So here we're going to look at those vocab words and remember the definition and some examples of them. So first we've got an acute angle. An acute angle is an angle that measures less than 90 degrees. So if you look back up here in our protractor picture, um, an example of this would be angle D, F, E. That angle is clearly smaller than 90 degrees, and if I read my protractor, I can see there that it's 30. This angle here that we talked about, C, F, E, is also less than 90 degrees. We've got an obtuse angle. That's an angle that measures between 90 and 180 degrees. Looking back in our diagram, there are several obtuse angles, but one is A, F, D. That angle is bigger than 90, but it's not quite to 180 yet. And if I read my protractor here, it is 150 degrees. Also talked about this one, angle A, F, C. Angle A, F, C is 110, so that is between 90 and 180. Next, we've got a right angle, and a right angle is an angle that measures exactly 90 degrees. Now, to find an example in this picture, it is hard to look at the angles that are lined up right here with that centerpiece of the protractor and with the edge, because the only ones that line up there are either obtuse or acute. So, to find one that is exactly 90 degrees, I've got to look within the protractor here, and I see that angle B, F, D, it measures here at 150 and here at 60. And if I take 150 and subtract 60, I get a 90 degree angle. So you can find angles within by looking at the numbers of the protractor in the same position, either on the top or the bottom, and then subtracting those or finding the difference. Next, we have a straight angle, and that is an angle that measures exactly 180 degrees. In our diagram here, that would be angle A, F, E. The angle that goes straight across our protractor is a straight line, and so it is a straight angle. Next, we have complementary and supplementary, which we have already talked about. Complementary is a pair of angles that have a sum of 90 degrees, and supplementary are a pair of angles that have a sum of 180 degrees. In our diagram, we have an example of complementary angles with angle AFB and DFE. And then we have an example of supplementary with AFC and CFE. So now that we have reviewed the different types of angles, let's get into writing the equations. By writing and solving equations, we can determine the missing angle measure in various angle relationships. So with our first pieces, it says to use what we know about complementary and supplementary angles to write an equation to find the missing angle measure x. So I know that when writing an equation, I need to have an equal sign. And in this case, since this angle is a straight line, 
I know that straight line is supplementary. So I know that it needs to equal 180 degrees. And in the definition of supplementary, it says that the sum of the two angles is going to be 180. So I know that sum means to add. So I'm going to take these two angle measures, 136 and add x. And both of those need to add up to be 180. Now, using what we know, we could also solve this equation to find out what x equals. Looking at our next problem, I see here that this angle makes a corner or is 90 degrees, and I know that 90 degrees is complementary. So again, based on the definition, it says that complementary angles have a sum of 90 degrees. So I'm going to take these two angle measures and add them together to get a sum of 90. So I have 74 degrees plus x degrees equals 90. In our next problems, we're going to practice finding missing angles, and we need to justify our answer using specific vocabulary. So in question three, it says that the measure of angle one is 42.8 degrees. Well, here is angle one. So it's telling us that right here, this angle is 42.8 degrees. This means that we're solving for the angle of measure, the measure of angle two. So I need to set up an equation to solve for this. These angles make a corner or a 90 degree angle. So I know that if I take my measure of angle one, which is 42.8, add angle two, I'm going to get 90 degrees. Here I used angle two as my variable. You could also use an actual variable like x. Now we're going to find the measure of angle two. So to get angle 2 by itself, or my variable by itself, I need to subtract 42.8 from both sides. On the left side of my equation here, that cancels out and becomes 0, so I'm just going to find that the measure of angle 2 is 90 minus 42.8 degrees. The difference here is 47.2 degrees, so that means that the measure of angle 2 is 47.2. Now, you could use different vocabulary to justify how you know. One way to know is that since this angle is complementary, I need the sum of measure the sum of angle 1 and angle 2 to be 90 degrees. And since we know that angle 1 is 42.8 degrees, the remaining amount is 47.2 to make a complementary angle. Looking at number 4, it tells us that the measure of angle 2 is 65.6 degrees, and here is angle 2. These angles together make a straight line, which I know that that, that is supplementary, and the sum here is going to be 180. So I know that I need to take angle 1 and add that to 65.6 to equal 180. Now we can solve this equation by subtracting 65.6 on both sides. Here I get that angle 1 is 114.4 degrees. Again, I know this because they are supplementary angles and they add up or have a sum of 180 degrees. Next, we're going to draw a picture to represent the situation below and then write an equation and solve. Now, ideally, when drawing a picture, you would at least use a ruler or a ruler and a protractor, but we're going to do our best here since we don't probably have those readily available. Question 5 says that two angles are complementary. One of the angle measures 15 degrees. What is the measure of the second angle? So I know that I need to draw a set of angles that makes a corner. And again, I'm going to do the best that I can here. And even since it may not be exactly 90, we indicate a 90 degree angle with this box in the middle of the two angles. So I'm just showing there that that is supposed to be 90 degrees. Now it says that one of the angle measures 15 degrees, and I know that 15 is pretty small, and again, without using a protractor, I would just estimate to make that about right there, and label that this right here is 15 degrees. Now we need to make an, write an equation and solve. Again, using the definition of complementary angles, I know they have a sum of 90, so if I take 15 and my unknown angle, add those together, that they're going to equal 90. Now when I solve this, I'm going to take away 15 on both sides, and in doing so, I find that our missing angle is 75 degrees. 
Question 6 says that angle ABE and angle DBE are supplementary angles. If the measure of angle ABE is 61 degrees, then what is the measure of angle DBE? So here it is telling us that our angles are supplementary, and I know that this is a straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and draw, to the best of my ability, a straight line. Now it says that one of the angles is 61 degrees, and I know that that is an acute angle. So I'm going to draw an angle or a ray to make my two angles here. Now remember that the angle is like this corner right here. So this angle is 61 degrees, and they call this angle ABE. So I can even label that this is A, point A, this is point B, and this is point E. Now for my other angle, that one is called DBE. So I'm going to start with D here, go to B, and then up to E. And this is the angle that we're trying to find. So this is our unknown angle. Now I know that compl or supplementary, based on the definition, has a sum of 180 degrees. So when I set up my equation here, I have 61 plus x equals 180. Now I can solve for the unknown angle by subtracting 61 on both sides. This gives me an angle measure of x is 119 degrees. Now, in today's lesson, we have reviewed a lot of vocabulary and we have learned how to write and solve equations. Go ahead and write in two to three complete sentences what you have learned from this lesson. If you made it to the end of the video, let me know what is your favorite pizza topping. In today's lesson, we learned about complementary and supplementary angles. By the end of this lesson, you are now able to write and solve simple equations for an unknown angle using complementary and supplementary angles. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye guys!